Hey everyone, welcome back to another exciting episode of Attack of Productions. Tonight I'm Bancroft being joined once again by Jimmy, Nick, and like always, Fluff. Sir. Hey, what's up people? In today's matchup, Nick has brought out King Vegeta, while Fluff has brought back King Cole for a second time. Um, like always, there's buttons, feel free to click them. But guys, take it away. In particular, we've already heard from King Cole, so Nick, you want to start out? Yeah, sure, I reckon so. Um, I played this deck before. Um, it, honestly, it was a subpar build, um, mostly just because I didn't have the promos. So I need. I just broke down, cried a lot about it, and then decided, fuck it, um, let's buy promos. So uh, these are running the new promos, um, the Raditz promo and the Vegeta switching gears. After playing with the switching, at least the switching gears, the Raditz, okay, but the switching gears turns the deck onto a whole new level. Um, you you can really see in this deck, like, you the speed of it is tremendously fast. Um, you get a lot of hits on your opponent with your little guys, with board spamming, uh, with your leader. There's a ton of ways to do damage to your opponent. Um, and so far, I've had a really really good success with it. I mean, I... It's it's been fun to play and I like it a lot. And you'll see a lot of what I'm doing when this game starts. Me and Fluff have talked a lot about the the promos for this deck in particular and what is necessary and what is uh uh kind of just extra. And I think we both agree that the Raditz is good, but switching gears is just it, it's what makes the deck. Yeah. It, it completely it's transformative to the way the deck can play. Um, it provides so many things for the deck. It's recovery, it draws, it puts the invaders back in the deck, it's free early game pressure. I mean, there's just nothing that that card doesn't do for the deck. And yeah, sure, it's not extremely valuable in the late game, like the the um, prepared to fight Vegeta. I think that's what that one's called. Um, it's not as valuable as that as far as late game pressure, but it's a free combo starter for you where you don't have to expend the energy and it recovers some resource for you. I, I think one of the major strengths of King Vegeta, and you can comment on this, Nick, and tell me if I'm correct or not, is that the deck kind of pressures your opponent into awakening in times that they wouldn't want to awaken. Uh, and switching gears helps with that. Being a 10k body, of course, once they're awakened, it's not that valuable. But being able to play that for free, get so much value out of it, and play it so quickly, especially on top of you know critting their life with your young invaders, that it forces your opponent into a position where they can they are forced to awaken in a unopportune time for them. Yeah, and here I estimate I. I'm kind of trying to measure what his next turn is going to be like. So I chose to take the life off of a new ruler, but I did not take the life off the leader effect. And I really think that I should not have taken the life off of either. And I'm expecting a pretty gas turn from King Vegeta. And Nick and I had been talking a little bit of tech and the cards that he chose. So I knew that there was going to be a lot coming my way over the next turn, I just don't think I was prepared for exactly how much. So there you see the switching gears. Um, and and here he's going to get to recycle and just basically control the quality of his hand for nothing. And then he finishes it up with a Bardock promo, which is going to be another crit into me. And one of the problems with King Cold is that you don't have a ton of combo power on the front side unless you want to waste precious resources in your hand. So I'm pretty much at the mercy of this tier. I'm pretty much just in for the ride for whatever he's got. Royal Supremacy is not online. I'm not awakened, so I can't pop a field card for combo. Um, I don't have a unison up, so I can't dormant potential. I'm just kind of, I have to take whatever he's dishing out here. And one of the cool things about this deck in particular is you can go as fast as you want. Um, and I, honestly, with the promos, I wasn't expecting it to be as fast as it is. But as you can see, like I did at four damage turn two, 
And with the young invader on his turn one, he's already down a ton, uh, three right life right now, right? Um, three from you, yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. it's incredibly oppressive. And then once you get into your later games, you still have a chance to control the field, which is huge. Um, and it's it's just honestly, it's ridiculous. So here's a quick question. I know like Fluff has mentioned in the past with like Xeno Gogeta, you needed the Supreme Kai promos to play. This deck has three separate promos that you're currently playing from the current tournament kits. Uh-huh. Yeah. Is I mean, do you feel like all three were needed? Like truly? Like does it feel well, like it? If you wanna play if you wanna play fast, then yes. Um, I last a couple weeks ago, I was playing this version of this deck that was running a lot slower. Um, it was using the Goku's. It was using those to control the board instead of controlling the opponent, controlling life essentially. Um, but this just makes it a million times faster. Um, and as you can see, my board is hefty, hefty now. Um, it's it's not necessary per se. But the only one that absolutely you, you have to have is the Vegeta. Um, the Bardock is nice. It's just it's good pressure. Um, the Raditz makes things a little bit easier. But the Vegeta, I would say, if you're going to shill out for the deck, you have to get the Vegetas. Yeah, the Vegeta is definitely, I would say, like, the Vegeta is a 5 out of 5. Like, gotta have. The Bardock for the aggro variant is probably like a 4 out of 5. And then the Raditz, depending on your build, I don't think you have to have the Raditz because he's Not essentially the same thing as the Vegeta. Um, and he serves the same purpose. So if you were just running for Vegeta and you cut the Goku package out, you don't have to have the Raditz. But I think if you want to include the Goku package, as Nick's done here, I think that's when Raditz kind of serves up his usefulness. Well, and another good point with the Raditz specifically, the Vegetas, the little Vegetas have unique, so you can only play one on your opponent's board. If you wanted to go a slower route, the Raditzes do not have unique. Yeah. So the Raditz is coming to play depending on the opponent, I would say. If you're playing more control style builds and you're, the opponent's just slowing you down, you're not able to gas, that's where you can see a lot more use out of the Raditz. Um, but if you're playing a more aggro style, and if you don't want to run the Gokus, if you just want to run the Vegetas um, in the Vegeta chain, then the Raditz isn't really that necessary. Yep. Um, here's my opportunity to kind of recover a little bit from where I was before. Um, I'm still definitely behind on the life counter, and I know once you put the Vegeta out, like, if you're able to go into the five, like, my ability to get rid of both Vegetas on your side of the field is extremely diminished, especially if you don't play correctly. Or if you do play correctly, like, if I can't bait you into swinging so I can pop both Vegetas, my ability to just get rid of both of them are really down. So I'm having to play to recover and also to sure up that I can survive your next turn with some opportunity to crack back later. Um, so really, that's the purpose of popping a new ruler, playing another new ruler, and I think I, I think I pass with one energy open because I have a, another three drop King Colt in hand that I want to use to defend with next turn. Yeah, and when it when it is my turn to start, um, there was only one card that I was absolutely worried about. So I played this really slow just to consider my options. Um, he has the unison on board, so charismatic villain was the one thing that I was really worried about. Um, it if I was to evolve the Vegeta, um, I mean, granted, I would have got him to take to take a life, but I didn't want to waste the investment of three energy just to lose my card essentially. <laughs> You know, I charged a Charismatic Villain in my energy here because I do run four in the deck. So I thought that I w- might have been able to find another one off of a new ruler. And for some reason, I just don't see Charismatic that much in this deck. And maybe I don't value it as heavily as I do like the field cards or the four drop Frieza or the other five drop Frieza. So I will swing Charismatics to the bottom unless I think it's going to be a big turn point for me and against you like being able to pop off the five drop vegeta is okay but if you drop like a representative of universe seven i'm just out 
Yeah, and that's what that's one of one of the one of the honestly the MVPs of the deck is a lot of your stuff can be squishy, but yeah. just a free strats giving everything you have barrier, making your opponent actually swing into your cards instead of using their abilities to get rid of stuff for free, that uh, makes a lot of difference in the game. Um, and especially especially one of my matchups against Jimmy when he was playing Mechie Kavora, strats is what saved me in that game. <laughs> Every matchup that I've had with King Vegeta, strategies has been the been the turning point in the match. A well placed strategies going into like a pivotal turn can just shift the game in King Vegeta's favor so easily. Yeah, like I, I've been, it, it's been getting a lot of love in King Vegeta list, but I don't think it's gotten the mainstream love that it deserves. Like I feel like it should be at least a three of sideboard in everybody's King Vegeta list. Yep. Yeah, it's it's honestly it's a no brainer. Um, I was running it at two, but the the way the game is set right now, it's so easy for removal. So ha- having, like I said, just having that extra barrier, just giving yep. your stuff barriers, is huge, very big. Yeah. So I do the evolve. Yeah. Um, I do the evolve. Um, I figured it's the only really thing I had, so I might as well take the risk. Um, swing, and then it was a negate, so Bardock is gone. Um, that was really the only thing I could have done at the time. Um, I didn't really have much in my hand. I, I'm also running the Gogeta chain, um, which, if you're doing more of an aggressive variant, it's not that needed. Uh, it does come in handy um, if you have the right stuff in your hand, but um, I, I feel like using the... If you're going all gas, you would want to take that out and put more checky stuff in. Um and what really would have helped me was I'm running, um, I'm borrowing it from them, but it was the King Piccolo, the red one, that's like the mini overrealm double striker. That we talked about this at the end of the game. That would have changed everything, um, but I yep. just never saw it. Yeah, your ability to drop that on turn two would have just blown me out. I don't. I think I don't think I would have had anything to do. Um, I have to play this turn very specifically. So I've got an idea for what I want to do, but tapping any energy really makes me vulnerable to negates. And I'm specifically hoping that perhaps you burn like an after image technique or something like that, where you spark a life. So I'm hoping that I can make you take damage on the leader swing here. And then I stand a chance. Um, If you combo out of this, my line of play changes to setting up and digging for more defensive options. Um, And I'm I'm thankful that you did take it there. So I think I load up the unison here. I'm debating on pushing for additional resources in hand or trying to bait the triple strike with the unison. I think I ultimately try to get, because you have a fair number of cards in hand. I think you're at six or seven cards in hand. So I know that I want to try to get into that as much as possible. And I have the Boo Nimba, so I can counter or counter if I need to, like if you, but you're tapped out. So the only counter that I'm truly, truly, truly worried about is after image technique. And because of the Vegeta on your side of the field and your leader's skill, I don't want to push with battle cards because then that's just a waste of energy for me here. Yeah, one of the things I found with this deck is I, once Vegeta is on board, I'm almost never worried about battle cards. The only really thing that's a problem is Unisons because um, they're not that interactable. Um, and my reasoning for why I didn't combo out of the leader sling was I wanted to be at three of life so I could activate King Vegeta's imposing presence for free or yeah. for no energy. Um, so I, I was feeling okay taking that life. Little did I know, because here I go activating the imposing presence, so I feel like if, I, if I'm safe from the unison swing, I should be okay the rest of the turn. But little did I know, the minus three on the King Vegeta unison is an activate battle, not an activate main. Yeah. So <laughs> there was really not much I was able to do. To and, stop and you it. know, imposing presence takes it down to a five thousand. So I'm starting ten behind your leader, but I know that when I activate the minus three, he's going to gain twenty thousand. So he's going to be up to twenty five bear, and then I take him up to thirty five forty. 
45, 50, and then 60, and then 70 here. So I feel pretty confident on going pretty high on the 70 triple strike. Um, and it's really, it's, it's, it's my Hail Mary at this point. You put me so far behind in life that I just had to take the, um, I had to take the chance here. Yeah, and I mean that 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 honestly stole the game. If we're being honest, I mean, <laughs> um, as you can see, I was dude, it was incredibly impressive on my end. Like, if I had another turn, chances are I would have had it. But um, sometimes you just can't you can't get too cocky in this game because someone's just going to steal it right under you, and you've nothing really yeah. you can do about it. That that unison is really good at sneaking under people's radars, and like I've said before. That unison is not integral to winning a match, but it absolutely can win you the match. Like that, and and against King Vegeta, it's probably my better win option because my battle cards are really neutered by the fact that you have the basically neg twenty at any given moment, and then if you're able to board the Gohonks unison. I pretty much don't have a way to play around that short of just waiting until we get to the energy level to where I can outplay there. And in one of my matchups, my last game against Jake with Mecha Frieza, I had two of the five drop Vegeta's on board. So if he plays something, that's going to get minus 20,000. If he swings, it's going to be another minus 20. Um, if you get them on board, they're incredibly oppressive. You don't have to worry at all about battle cards. It's yeah. the unisons that really worry that you struggle with. But if you have the right setup, you can help. You can defend yourself. But in this case, I did not. Yep. Yeah. And with that being said, thank you all for tuning in. Like always, there's buttons. Feel free to click them. Nick, last words. Yeah, promos are disgusting. I wish Bandai would do something different about them. I'm tired of spending two hundred dollars on a playset. <laughs> Jimmy. Uh. Don't play King Vegeta, play Force of Will instead. And Fluff, would you lead us out? Um, the cost of promos sucks, Bandai. Do something about it. Um, stop printing archetype integral promos, and let's make promos alt art high rarity reprints. As always, read your cards. <laughs> yeah. As always, read your cards, know your plays. Let us make mistakes so you don't have to, and Fluff out.